This is the Joe Cotton story. Joe Cotton was known in my family as Uncle Joe when I was growing up in Holdenville, Oklahoma. He was the brother of my grandfather, Reps Van Cotton. Joe Cotton was a police officer and also police chief in Holdenville at one time. He was chief of police in Wewoka, Oklahoma in the 1950s and had just gone home for the day on Saturday, June 27, 1953. He was at the dinner table at home on East 10th Street when he got a call from the police station that a man with a gun was making threats toward family members at the man's home on East 7th Street in Wewoka. The call to police was from the man's wife in the home just a few blocks away from Joe Cotton's home on East 10th Street. Joe Cotton told the responding officer, police officer uh, Carl Sullinger, to stop by his house and pick him up to go and he would go with him to check on the situation uh, out in response to the phone call to police for help. We woke up PD officer Sullinger drove quickly to Chief's to the Chief's home and picked him up at the front sidewalk on 10th Street. Chief Joe Cotton and the police officer drove the short distance from 325 East 10th Street, left turn by the park at the end of 10th Street, and then left again heading west on East 7th Street to the house located at 319 East 7th Street. Pulling up in the front yard, both policemen opened the doors to step out of the marked Wewoka Police Department car to approach the front of the house. With neighbors watching, the man who lived in the house fired a shotgun from the front of the house in ambush at the approaching officers the first blast striking both men and starting a gun battle that continued with both police officers taking cover behind them. We woke up PD police car. Chief, Chief Joe Cotton was shot in the shoulder and neck area by the first shotgun blast and Officer Sullinger was wounded in the arm by the same first shot. Locating the shooter who was behind, hiding behind shrubbery bushes at the front porch area of the house, Joe Cotton and the other policemen fired their pistols and returned fire on the shooter. During the exchange gunfire, Chief Joe Cotton was hit by another shotgun blast in the neck and face area as he crouched behind the, the uh, police car. Joe called out to the other police officer, He has killed me as he continued to fire his pistol at the gunman hiding near the front porch. The gun battle continued until the gunman was struck by the return fire and soon put down his shotgun and surrendered with the wounds with his wounds to the to the wounded police officer Sollinger that was with Joe Cotton. Joe Cotton died from the from his wounds at the scene of the shootout as he fell to the ground near the police car on East 7th Street. Pictures taken by the local newspaper photographers clearly showed the substantial police car damage from the gunfight. The windows were shot out of the police car and the side of the car was scarred from 12 gauge shotgun blasts. The police incident report stated that Chief Joe Cotton fired four shots with his 38 caliber service revolver during the gun battle before he died at the scene of the shootout. Uncle Joe's funeral was the first one my folks took me to as a youngster of six years old. I remember my dad Herschel King picking me up and holding me beside Uncle Joe's casket so I could see him one final time and he told me say goodbye to Uncle Joe. I remember seeing damage to the right side of the body and face and neck and he was wounded in the 
from whenever he was wounded in the battle that my grandfather Reps Van Cotton described as an ambush in the dark. I remember I remember my grandfather Reps saying to me as he sobbed sitting on the concrete wall in the front of Uncle Joe's house when we woke up during the family gathering. It was an ambush in the dark. I researched this event in 2007 and visited Wewoka to find the house where Joe Cotton lived at 325 East 10th Street. The house is still there and I recognized the front entrance of the house just the same as I remember at age six. Age six walking up the sidewalk through the front door and into the living room full of mourners at the time in summer of 1953. The front sidewalk has been replaced and the concrete or stone wall that was in front of the cotton home is no longer there. That was the stone wall that my grandfather Reps sat on and sobbed about Uncle Joe's death. I remember being upset that my pap was crying and as a six-year-old I tried to cheer him up by telling him about getting my first bicycle with training wheels that week. I took the drive on the same route that Uncle Joe took responding to on that Saturday night over the house over to the house where the uh, shootout took place. The house is still there at 319 East 7th Street today. There are still bushes around the front porch of the place, likely not the same ones the shooter was hiding behind in 1953. The shooter who ambushed the police responding that summer night was a man named Joe Sisney. He survived his wounds. I'm still researching what became of this man in terms of the law and the rest of his life. Updates will follow. Written by James V. Kane, grandson of Rips Van Cotton.